love these cold mornings. It's gonna warm up nice today. We could get a decent bite, but that's not really the goal. The goal is to teach you how the rod, the line, and the lure, they do make a difference when they're balanced perfectly. And that's what we're after today. So next stop, the ramp. Already aired up the tires on the trailer and fueled her up. Let's go. All right, we have arrived. Let's go get some. It's warming up fast. I got a little later start. It's after 9:30 now, so. I think I'm gonna get rid of my vest and get up here and start push pulling. That ought to warm me up. See if we can't find something. I'm trying to use the light to my advantage, even though we've got those spotty clouds there and a little bit of this wind as well. fishing becomes a lot less fatiguing when you have the right rod, the right line, and the right lure all balanced. And there's a formula for that, and I'm going to share it with you here in a minute. But I just want to make a few more casts since I got into this zone where I've been seeing a lot of the bait just kind of dimpling around. See if I can pull one of these redfish out of here. actually require me making a lure change just because the sun's busted out of that bank of clouds and I might have to go to a suspending plug or maybe even a plug that stays or a jig better yet that stays really tight to the bottom. top water a shot this morning. As we all know, the alpha fish, they eat the top water. We've done enough videos on that. down this way. So when I have a pin, keep them a little honest. Don't always have to throw toward the bank. Then we're going to make a bait change. I've been throwing this about 20 minutes now, 30 minutes. I've had a couple of little pops. But when a fish really wants to get it, let's face it, they're going to get it. Just not quite wanting to come up on these bright skies and bust this top water. We've had some cool air the last four or five nights. Our water temperature from a week ago has dropped about 10 degrees. So I'm going to make a bait change. Ladyfish, we don't want those. There's a lot of small fry bait in the water right now. Ladyfish are kind of all in them. 
get a little further out there. Long cast. I mean a long cast. And we're going to talk about long casting. And long casting with accuracy requires a system. Now, I've tied on, since the top water, I've tied on this MR17, which is a Miralore Miradine, the original. And uh, it's a 3 8 of an ounce suspending plug bait. And for many that are artificial you know, enthusiasts, this is one of their go-to baits. And I have found a rod that throws it extremely well. I felt another one hammering it. This is the bait itself, okay, the MR17. This is a custom color of ours, the sodium shad. But I'm throwing it on a rod that's seven foot two. This is a seven foot two. It's a medium action, because this is a medium weight plug, okay? And it's moderate fast. And that means it has a softer tip. You see how soft the tip is? That's so that when you hook a fish up on these smaller, these are like size six treble hooks, you'll be able to land the fish without pulling it. So it, on a suspending plug, this is a huge advantage having the right rod. Now, the line itself, this is the Diamond 10. It's about a two pound uh, diameter if it were monofilament. Uh, it's an eight carrier braid, extremely round, and allows me to tie some really small knots. If you'll see right there, this is the modified Albright. That's important too, to go through the guide train. The other thing you've got to have is you've got to have a reel. This reel here is the Stratic. This is the new one, uh, the FM from Shimano, the 3000 XG. If you want to see a video on it, I did a great one with JP DeRose at iCast 23 this year. Uh, I'll try to have my guys put that link in the description below. Uh, but it's it, it's the ideal raw, you know, reel for this balance. And when you're throwing Miradines, this is a good setup. Uh, this is a Fitzgerald. This is one of their Aqua Dream rods. This is in the um, 72 medium. It's a it's about it's a I'm going to say it throws everything well from a quarter to half ounce. Um, where I think quarter and three eighths throw best on this, honestly, because you can see how the tip tip flexes with a three eighths. But it is a nice setup for doing what I'm doing. Now there are some other things that you can do, like cast down wind and, and have a shorter stroke. But I mean, I'm casting a good 120 feet out there right now. So it gives you uh, that punch power to get it out there. There's not much wind this morning and you can cover some water. I mean, really cover some water. And as I tell you every time, the more water you cover, well, the more fish you generally catch. Just love the way this rod loads just right. You've got everything working for you. You can make nice, clean, smooth casts, and it's less fatiguing on you, the angler. You're not having to feel like you're making a jump shot or something to, to get a nice, smooth, long cast and in the area that you need it to land in. fish are all over the, there's rock here. Um, it doesn't look like a rock, it looks like grass, but trust me, it's rock. Anytime you see this short, clumpy grass, it's definitely all rock. I can almost reach that next point with this rod. One of the big pluses about moving over to Diamond Braid is the braid has a very light blue color, so it doesn't have that deep marine blue that might jump out to fish. This one blends into the water. The three favorite colors I have for braid, just so you all know, are gray, white, and light blue. Now, I like green as well, but I like that in certain situations. But because I live here on the nature coast and, and a lot of the fisheries I fish have clean, clear water, I really do prefer those three braid colors over, over all others. Oh, there he is. I saw the trout hit it right there at the top. Nope, ladyfish. Stalled on it and got it. Ah, that's the way I want him to jump off. I don't have to deal with him. All right, let's make another long cast toward the point there where the water's moving. 
Let's see if we can't pull one more good trout off this edge. That first one was a good one. I only got another hour and I've got to head back. I've got business to attend to. Come on, I want a big one. I want one of those big sow trout sitting on one of these rocky points. I know you're there. It's cold enough now to put you there. And this is one of my favorite zones. I'm, I'm not too far from the mouth of the St. Martin's River here. And one of the better areas where I live to hold good trout. I try to get little sharp twitches and I'm coming against the tide a little bit, but it stalls my, my little suspending plug here perfectly. Take a quick break. If you haven't tried these, try them. They're chili roasted pistachios. They're amazing. They're just amazing. I'm addicted to them. <laughs> well, before we pick that jig rod up and start talking about the rod to lure balance on that particular deal, let's talk a little bit about my new partner, Diamond. Now, Diamond Braid has been around forever. Uh, if you're a Floridian, you're very familiar with this brand. And if you're not, I'm about to coach you up on it a little bit. They have a full lineup of mono, uh, like the Mamoy line right here. They have a full lineup of Illusion fluorocarbon leader, like I have right here. These are, are brands that have been trusted here for decades. And in fact, they even make an IGFA lineup that breaks at just the right breaking strength for record uh, chasers. So if you're a Floridian, you're probably really familiar for, uh, with this, and especially if you live on the East Coast or the Panhandle or the Florida Keys, where you target a lot of pelagic species, sailfish, uh, dolphin, marlin, um, any, anything offshore, you, you're probably very familiar with diamond. Now, they do make lighter test braids now in this 10 pound variety and we're, we're gonna probably come out with some lighter weight stuff in the future. Uh, but for me, the, br the braid is so limp. This is actually two pound diameter. It does a fantastic job of long casting for myself. And if you look at it real closely, it has a very light color. So the three colors I like the most for fishing inshore would be light blue, it would be white, which they have as well. And then a third color, which I will work on them to make, is smoke gray. Those three colors are fantastic. Now this is an eight carrier braid, uh, and, and to me it does a really good job of tying very, very small knots. So I just want you to consider, if you're a fan of the channel, uh, we need you to support the brands that support us. So I just wanted to open your eyes to Diamond Braid, look it up. If you can't find it in a local retailer, go to sodiumusa.com get yours there. These airboats are annoying. Woo. I'm throwing a bugs jig now. It's a uh, it's a quarter ounce jig. It probably weighs really closer to three eighths. And I'll I'll go through the the whole deal with you here in a second because I'm starting to see a few redfish. I want to see if I can catch one, but I use this a lot for sight fishing. This is a good sight fishing rod that I've got it tied on with. And I just want to see if I can pick one of these redfish up. I've had one follow and then I just had a trout follow it all the way back to the boat. So I'm just trying to, I crawl this around like a bass jig right on the bottom. Definitely looks like a creature style bait. It's very weedless. Um, and it just, it fools fish. It really does. It does a good job of fooling fish. This rod is perfect for casting it too. It's kind of like making it make contact with the bottom. The head on this bait is just, it's one of those really cool baits. It's got a really heavy heavy weed guard here you can see that's like a 45 degree line tie right there so it just crawls over the top of stuff it's got these two little legs which someone's bit one of them off already um, it's got a little rattle chamber just looks super realistic
good long cast. This particular rod <clears throat> is in the all-purpose series. I use it a lot for Ned Rig fishing, sight fishing. It's got that little softer tip that I can make a nice, easy presentation without a big splat in the water. Throw a lot of the smaller Z-Man baits on those lighter mushroom finesse heads and some of the shrimp baits. And then I throw a lot of the bugs baits <clears throat> on this particular rod. And I've got it spooled up with 10 pound diamond. And even though it's only seven feet long, so it doesn't cast quite as far as that, that seven and a half foot rod that I was using, it's basically the same action, just a little shorter rod. But because it's a shorter rod, it's much more accurate. I can get it right where I want to along these edges. Just perfect. Be the bait. Just one to kind of snap free off a piece of grass one time and have a redfish just gobble it. That little jig will, because of that line tie on the bugs is just at the right angle, it lets me crawl over every little rock, little branch. It doesn't get hung up very easily. And I'm, you know, I'm barely reeling this Vanford. Again, another secret to making those long casts is having, this is a Shimano, this is the C3000XG. Similar to the Stratic, this is just a much lighter version. The Vanford came out to replace the CI4 model of past years. And it's turned into a fan favorite with a lot of Shimano guys. They love it. Uh, just, it weighs nothing. It's like a six, a little over six ounces and you can fish it all day and your hands never get tired. Really nice reel. Small manatee right here. You can see him expelling air. A young one, not a real big one. There he is. How you doing, Snooty? Second one I've seen today. That time of year though, when it, like I said earlier, it's getting chilly. They get in here. I'm just trying to find a red. I smoked a few off the bank. It's a little bit of a high pressure day, but figured I could get one with my bugs. contact with the bottom of the bugs jig. And this this weight line, which is eight pound, and this rod lets me be pretty accurate with casting up in the shadows. They see that splash and I let it set for a minute and then they come and check it out and then when I reel it away they think they're flushing it and I end up catching it. Okay, now we're using a little bit bigger bait. We're using a big swim bait. This is the four inch line through Mulletron from Z-Man right here. Great looking bait. Um, and it weighs total weight really when you really think about it. It weighs about three quarters. So again, I've got 10 pound braid. I've got 30 pound leader. I've got a rod that has a lure weight of like a quarter to three quarter here on the aquafin. And I'm just making nice smooth casts, but I can reach whatever I want with this. And it's just not because it's a heavy bait. It's the right balance. If I was throwing on too light a rod, I'd never be able to put the cast out there. Con conversely, if I had too heavy of a rod, I wouldn't be able to launch it either. But you, when you find the right balance and everything, and here, I've, again, I've got the long stroke spool. This is the Shimano Twin Power 4000. And I, I've been dying to throw this bait. I haven't got to throw it an awful lot. So I wanted to 
get a couple of casts. It looks great in the water. I mean, just great. It looks just like the finger mullet swimming here. Just wanted to get a couple of casts with this bait. But man, it'll swing it out here. And to me, having the the least amount of effort to be able to make the longest and most accurate cast is always important. Gives you a lot of confidence too. That you can work a certain distance off a shoreline and do well. Let me pull up in this corner and see if I can see anything. Man, that's a good looking bait. Ooh, love it. Let's see if I can get out there where they're all. When we first started utilizing this and testing this Mulletron, it was just fantastic on big trout. Uh, we caught a lot of snook on it. I think that had a lot to do with the time of year. We've got a big cold front here right now. So I'm expecting to just catch trout or maybe redfish. And as you can see, we've got bluebird skies today. So I'm just punching around. My main goal out here today was to to throw some of this gear and show all of you what the potential is when you put it all together with the line and the lure, the rod, even the reel plays a role in casting effortlessly and getting not only the distance that you deserve, but the accuracy that's needed to catch fish. There's a bunch of bait moving in here. I just want something to stop this. I want to feel it hit it. What I really like about this bait is, good lord, you can kick it out there a long way. This bait, if you reel it fast enough, you can make it a wake bait. Cannot wait till we get a little bit warmer temps and we can get these fish bunched up a little bit better. It's going to be fun for snook on this rod and this lure. This whole setup. Wind's pushing me back in this corner. Let me let me push back out. We'll get back after it. So here at the end of the day, or my day, I should say. The, the takeaway I want you to have is no matter whether you're throwing top water, suspending baits like a Muradine, a lightweight jig like a Bugs, or even throwing the four inch Mulletron that weighs three quarters of an ounce, there is always a balance to your equipment that's going to provide you with the smoothest, longest, most accurate cast. And you just got to put that formula to work for you and understand how your lure needs to be manipulated in the water and how your equipment will cast that that particular bait. Um, in, in many cases there's several different rods that will work for one particular bait. But you'll find your favorite and once you do you're gonna stay with it. I promise you that.